away, boss. Hello and good evening. This is going to be a very low effort, low editing video where I'm just filming myself throwing something together late at night. Every now and then you have those creative impulses at 11 p.m. and you think, I need to go put some plastic together right now. That's what I'm experiencing now. It happens a couple of times, it's mostly what built my stomper, and it's made a couple of my custom characters like my cyborg grunt herd. And tonight, I think we're going to hangering to make a feral orc war boss. This is a war boss that I made out of an Age of Sigma oracle war chanter. I bought a bunch of secondhand orcs about a year ago. I got some pretty cool stuff in there, a mega boss, a weird nod shaman, ten hard boys, but I got about four war chanters. Two of them I've sold, and this one I turned into an orc war boss. It already comes on a 40mm base, he's big, he's brawny, and he has a distinct profile. The war chanter has this hands raised posture, so I was able to amputate his hands and put a claw on one and all of his ranged weapons on the other. The combi gun and the twin slugger up there. I also had an attack squig in a secondhand bits box that I bought, so he's got his attack squig as well. And his previous owner gave him this helmet from the old Ard Boys, which is going to match really well if I make some Ard Boys into knobs for him to lead. So I've got another war chanter here from that same lot, and I'd like to turn him into a war boss as well. I'm going to see if I can give him a different profile to this one, and not just have him be an identical clone, but with slightly longer horns on his helmet. So let's see what we can do. First, let's go looking around through our big old bag of bits. This is my bits bag. It has several smaller bits bags in it, sorted by kit. When I make feral orcs, I like to leave them pretty unaccessorized. I think that the thing that modernizes them is the weapons they've been given, but if they have been part of some older tribe, they'll probably keep those effects on them as pride in where they've come from. So this guy, I haven't put any like pouches or guns or reactors on him, because all he needed was a power claw and a big old set of guns. So when we go diving around in here, I'm not going to be looking for any little techie greeblies to try and modernize them. They should look like a bunch of idiot medieval cavemen that just crawled out of a hole in the wall and then picked up a laser gun. So let's go looking for a power claw, a combi gun, and some slogans. New boys. Old boys, there's a lot of them. Knobs. Mega knobs. Flashkits. And commandos. Of all these kits, I've only ever bought the new boys in the combat patrol, and one box of the old boys. Everything else here was from that second hand lot I found, and I've been absolutely looting it. I'm not going to take a slugger from this lot, because I've already given my existing feral war boss the kind of double barreled uppy downy slugger that the knob has with the big skull glyph on the side. So I'm going to see if I can find something more appropriate in the knobs of the mega knobs kit. Maybe even the flash kits or the commandos might have some holsters that I can stick on his legs. And of course, we're still looking for a power claw. Okay, so far so good. Um, I was able to get a combi scorcher from the knobs kit, which is going to contrast nicely because our other one has a combi rocket. I also started to go around rooting. I've got a couple of holsters like it's here, uh, but I don't have any other power claws. Not that many actually come in the knobs kit. I think the guy I got my bits from already built his with all the power claws because I only had big choppers in there. And I think he built all his mega knobs with power claws too. But I can just stick a couple kill saws together and because this is not a big chopper it has to be used as a power claw stat block. It reads like a claw. It's got the same energy as a claw. It's about the same size as a claw. It's a, it's a power claw. It's a power claw. It's the choppy bits. Um, I've also just realized that I don't think I have another attack squeak. So I'm gonna go digging around through my Runt, Herd, and Gretchen kit, and I'm gonna see if there's still a squeak hound in there that we could repurpose as an attack squeak. It is now a quarter past midnight. I've been working on this for a little over an hour now. Um, and I'm pretty happy with where we're going to leave it off tonight. I've got a combi scorcher. I've trimmed off the back of it so that we can mount it on the... as like an amputated hand on the war chanter. So it's gonna need a little bit of help fitting again because it's a very wide gun and his arm is not that big. Um, I'm also still got to bolt the sluggers to it. 
Because I realized if one of his hands is a kill saw and one of his hands is a gun, then holstered sluggers aren't really that useful. Because, uh, you know, you don't have any hands to actually draw the guns. Um, so instead of bolting it onto the top like I've done with this war boss, you can see the little pair of sluggers up here, I think I'm going to try and bolt them side by side, or maybe on either side of the gun as well. Kill saws to stand in for the power claw. It's all good. And I ended up, yes, having enough squeak hounds to get another attack squeak. The trouble is though, this is the squeak hound. And this is the attack squeak. You can see that the attack squeak is a fair bit bigger and meaner looking. Squeak hound, well, it's kind of just an angry little dog thing. This looks like a horrific ball of hatred, more so than this. So what do you do to make these creatures look like they're on par in power? Well, you do what you do pretty much every other time when you're kitbashing orcs, which is stick a bunch of spikes and chainsaws on it. This is my improved attack squig, and I'm gonna grab the camera and actually pick it up so you can properly focus on this, because I think it turned out pretty well. So here's our size comparison between attack squig and squig hound, and here... Oh, hold on. Wait, focus. 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 Touch the screen with my nose. There we go. This is the improved squig hound. I've clipped off all of the hairy parts on the top, as well as the runt herd hand that was originally holding it. I repurposed the collar, I know the leash, um, the bit in its mouth that originally the runt herd was gripping it by, is straps that connect to this chainsaw mounted to its forehead. I've covered up some of the trimmed plastic with a big spiky plate on the back, and I've given him an iron jaw as well to make him look a little bigger and more imposing around the front. All these come from the boys' kit. And now, they're still not quite equivalent in size, but these creatures at least look like they could go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We've got our dude. We've got his guns. We've got his claw. We've got his attack squeak. I think that's a great place to leave it after one hour of moderately focused work on one evening. Um, I'll come back to this tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, whenever I get around to it, and we'll see if we can put them all together. Good morning. Um, so I ended up staying about another hour awake last night until 1am, which means I can now give this video a catchy clickbait title, like building a war boss at 1am. Um, I mostly spent it just scraping mold lines and gluing some pieces together. I've been doing the rest of that this morning as well. We're almost finished, and I'd like to show you what I've done so far. First things first, I have glued the whole attack squeak together. He's got his llama plate, his chain head, he's got his jaw plate, and he's looking mean. I've also modified the combi scorcher. The hardest part of these is getting rid of the hand that holds it here. When you build knobs, you get an arm, usually, that holds the gun over here like this, and it's easy enough to remove the trigger where it holds it. But you also get an arm with no hands in the kit that would connect to a hand that holds it, you know, slung under the barrel here. Now, if you kind of just hack away at it with your knife and your clippers, you'll eventually get it. And it's a good thing this is orcs because it leaves a pretty rough finish. And this should be able to attach pretty well to our war chanter. I've cleaned up all of his mold lines because the previous owner did not, and I've cut his arms much shorter than the other war chanter. Well, not really cut, they were joined on here with super glue and kind of just fell off, but it helps to give him a different finish. If you look at this war chanter over here, you can see that his pieces are just attached kind of at the wrist, he's only missing his hands. This war chanter has been cut all the way down to the elbow, and I think that'll help to give him a slightly different look as well as his weapons being different. Speaking of weapons, his power claw. I've used blue tech to test the fit on putting these two kill saws together. It mounts really nicely over the severed arm, and I've attached some sluggers to either side of it for his twin slugger. I know it's just two copies of two identical weapons kind of slapped together, but I think this is a really cool front profile. I'm gonna blue tech this all together, see how he fits on a 40mm base. And I'm going to call it done for now. And he's all done! 
so he fits very comfortably on the 40mm base, and his kind of offset stance makes enough room for the attack squig to fit down the front. You'll see that some of these longer horns mounted on his back, as well as the ones on his helmet, have had to be cut down so that the weapons will actually fit. Here's his kill saw, slugger, power claw, killy left-handed thing over here, and on this side you can see the combi scorcher mounted here. I've had to trim a couple of wires, but because I've removed the helmet here I can still leave the ammo feed draped down. So here I have two completed Auric War Chanters converted into feral war bosses, equipped with power claws, attack squigs, combi weapons, and twin sluggers. I think they look unique enough. Obviously they're cut from the same cloth, but these guys would come from a similar tribe anyway, so I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. Thanks for watching this video. It was really nice and kind of liberating to be able to forget about editing or scripting and just kind of work and film it a little bit as I go. This is the kind of format that I really appreciate in videos by people like The Red Ones Go Faster. I really like what old Big Mac does. If there were more people like him in the hobby, the world would be a much happier place. I think they turned out pretty good. Maybe I'll do some more of these if I have more random creative impulses, even if they're not at 1am. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye! Shut off!